I'm working on my next project. Uh, a re radio receiver for the airband, say 130 uh, megahertz. And the first thing to, uh, to do when you want to make a small super heterodyne radio uh, is to make an IF um, amplifier. And in fact you can choose the IF frequency more or less to what you want. That is quite a bold statement, but I only want to say with that statement that um, you are not bound to say 455 kilohertz. 455 kilohertz is often chosen in simple radios or shortwave radios, but you can also take another frequency uh, to be amplified in the IF amplifier. And this is, by the way, how such an amplifier works. A transistor, NPN transistor in this case, positive, negative, and in the collector lead we have that IF can, IF filter, and there is a part that is frequency dependent, that has a capacitor. When you open such a small filter, and that's even sometimes directly visible, that there is a capacitor inside that IF can. Um, yes, here you can see it. In that IF can mounted inside there is a capacitor now in the middle of the screen. And the part um, of the coil with that capacitor bridged has to be in the um, collector lead. At least when you want to use a grounded emitter amplifier. So that's important and here we take the um, 455 kilohertz out, so the out coupling winding is here. And I have um, thought by myself, I couldn't find a filter for 455 kilohertz. So my idea was to use another filter and I've tested them all here. And I do that with this help oscillator. The schematic of this help oscillator is on YouTube. And for instance, now for this demonstra uh, demonstration purpose, I have connected here <coughs> that yellow filter with a yellow core. And these are the type numbers 99742. It's from Toko, Japan. It has a yellow core. And when you do that with a test oscillator, uh, you can find, and I found, that this filter was made for 300 kilohertz, approximately. You can see that here, 303 kilohertz. The oscillator creates a perfect sine wave. That's also, <coughs> say, a good indication that you have a good IF filter in your hands. It means that it is a high quality factor, such a very super sine wave, um, <coughs> etc. And I will also demonstrate this. This is of course a small problem, but anyway, when I change the capacitor in this oscillator that takes part in the capacitive voltage divider, you can also find this. So you see that it also oscillates on 168 kilohertz with not such a strong oscillation and not such a, <coughs> say, pure oscillation. So let's get back to the, the best oscillation and that is a thing to take in account. Take with that help oscillator to get an indication about where the IF filter performs at its best. Search for the 
purest waveform. Anyway, um, always a problem how to mount such a filter on, say, such a copper cloud board like this here. Uh, of course, you cannot solder such a filter directly. It, it's all miniature, so very, very small. It uh, could be a pain to solder, um, say, components to it or whatever, transistors or resistors, capacitors. So this is what I do in that case. I mount it first on, say, such a piece. Uh, of this board, brown board, with all these small holes in it. And on the back side I solder it in this way. It's quite coarse, but anyway the contacts are good, that's important, the contacts to the pins of the IF filter. And when it's mounted um, you can very easily Mount such a filter with <coughs> on such a board and with a small piece of a nylon nylon ring or so, so that is somewhat above the board and there is no uh, possibility uh, to get shortcuts between the pins. So that will be uh, this the second <coughs> uh, project, second part of the project. And I wanted to show here that uh, you can test the IF filter in the help oscillator. <coughs> and it's also important, very interesting, you can align both filters that you are going to use in the IF amplifier already a kind, in a kind of preset. So you can set here these cores of the IF filters to the the frequency where you want to use them, in this case 303 kilohertz. And that gives, uh, say, uh, a very big success factor for your IF amplifier, because it is already pre-tuned. Often such a IF amplifier consists of two transistors or three filters in between. And on 455 kilohertz, that's also such a low frequency that you can use a low frequency transistors. Not typical high frequency transistors, but important to tell when you want for the first stage, the mixer stage, you must use a high frequency transistor because uh, at the mixer we uh, send in the antenna signal and at the same time the local oscillator, oscillator signal and the frequency difference, frequency transformation to 455 kilohertz or whatever IF frequency is realized there. So that first transistor must be able to work on a high frequency, say 10 megahertz or in this case uh, on approximately 130 megahertz in this project. Anyway, um, that were, were the most important things to tell when you want to make a test coil for, for 4 or 5, 5 kilocycles. This is a good idea. I made it here. When I connected this, connect this to the test oscillator I read on the frequency counter 455 kilohertz. Farad core inside 4 millimeters is the diameter, 220 windings and a capacitor of 390 picofarad. Only to give an idea. Of course, to test such a filter, especially when you have soldered it, it can get very hot. That means that the internal wiring in such a filter can get loose or can break. So it's always, always uh, impossible, uh, sorry, possible and advised to um, measure here the 
ohms resistance of the coils. Do that always. Of course when you mount it in an oscillator circuit you are sure that it oscillates, but you, it could be that during the soldering action there is a bad contact here or this is uh, broken due to heat. So before you mount them in your IF amplifier measure them with an ohms meter for instance in the ohms range or with this uh, setting of the meter etc etc. Uh, that was more or less all to tell. I want to show this type number also of um, I don't know whether it's an IF filter, but it is useful as a coil that is trimmed to a very precise frequency band. That can be useful in radio experiments. And that's this type number of TOCO 2291. And in uh, that case you have to solder on the side where there are two pins, whether on the side with three pins, two pins together to make it work. Because the capacitor inside this filter is not connected in the say normal way, but in another way. Uh, you can study that on the World Wide Web. How that on one side that capacitor is loose. So to make it a frequency dependent uh, filter you must solder these two pins together to make it work in this frequency band. So I hope it was a little bit clear. Um, the chosen frequency, <coughs> IF frequency of say 300 kilohertz is completely experimental. I don't know whether that will work, but anyway, gonna try it.